Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me here today back at Regal Autosport. It's been a while since I've been back here. You guys may recognize that they're Mark 8 Golf R behind me. I'm caught here in my Mark 7R today for some more mods. It's the next stage of the modifications to this car. Now, what we're doing today is obviously the limited slip diff, as you can see from the title and thumbnail. It's not gonna be a mod which you can see once it's fitted. You're never gonna see it again, really, um, but it's gonna drastically improve how this car uh, drives. Uh, and handling is my focus at the moment before going on into the interior work, which is gonna be a big transformation. Uh, plans underway uh, in the background at the moment, and I'm getting really very, very excited indeed. Uh, but yeah, today I'm actually gonna be leaving the car here uh, at Regal for a couple of days the guys here are very kindly gonna hopefully film a little bit of the installation for me before i come back and basically take it away and take it on track uh at the end of this video basically um for a little bit of a first drive so that's all uh, to look forward to but before we get into that let's catch up with ash have a look at basically what we're fitting today um and then go from there but yeah really excited limited slip diff time for my mark 7r Okay, so we're joined again with Ash from Regal. It's been a little while. It's been a little okay. while. Probably the last time we caught up was with the Mark 8, actually, which yeah, is sat outside absolutely. looking cool. Anyway, we've got a little bit of a demonstration uh, here in front of us. Um, diffs aren't really my strong point. Don't really know what I'm talking about. You obviously do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, give us a run round of basically yeah. what, what we're doing. Talk you through what we've got here in front of us. So, um, we've got like a standard open differential. So, if you've got a standard Golf R, this is going to be what's um, inside there. And what we've got here, um, this is a Golf R differential. This particular one one is for a DSG because it's got this sort of like parking gear around here mm -hmm. but it's basically the same as a, a non-DSG like you've got in your car like yeah. a manual if you just remove this part here mm -hmm. and then we've got um, like the wave track ATB as well sort of like split open so we can talk to you guys um, what an ATB is sort of like how it works the differences all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so open diffs, like why you might want to install one. I know obviously you've got a lot of power in your car, so you're probably starting to notice like a little bit of inside wheel spin, especially yeah. on track, you turn everything off mm. and you're trying to apply the power coming out of the corner. You can feel the front end just sort of escaping away from yeah, you. Yeah. Um, so obviously the higher the power levels you go up, the more grip you get, the faster you drive. Those problems um, sort of like reoccur more and more become more prominent. Mm -hmm. um, so the way an open diff works is it basically allows um, power to flow along the path of least resistance. Um, and the reason why you want to install an ATB is to basically um, bias power evenly across whatever axle may be the front or the rear. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, and many of the other viewers will know, obviously Golf R is like predominantly front wheel drive car as well. So it yeah, sends exactly. drive to the front of the car and mm -hmm. then to the rear. And then on the Mark 7 Golf R, it only sends around 50% if there's 100% loss of drive at the front mm -hmm. and then say for example in that kind of scenario and you've got like a total loss of grip sending all the power to the back yeah. through an open diff as well isn't particularly too great mm -hmm. so you, it's just all about maximizing the amount of grip available on sort of like both axles and obviously if you're sending most of that drive to the front that's what you want to do yeah so um what an atb lsd does is like i said sort of like biases power evenly across the axle um, you've got loads of different diffs available, like plate diffs, ATB diffs, and today we'll obviously talk about an ATB because that's what a wave track does. So the way the wave track works is it basically uses sort of like these um, pinions and gears instead of using um, sort of like these types of spider gears inside an open diff to distribute the power. And um, with the uh, wave track diff, it does it a little bit differently to other sort of like ATBs that are on the market. So um, what you have with some ATBs on the market, some of them have a design that's like this um, in the center. What happens is, is when you have um, like a loss of axle load, which is say for example, you lift a wheel like on the circuit, um, you unload the suspension where you're going around a corner really heavily and you unload like the inside wheel or even you have wheel slip, you basically create a situation um, whereby there's a lot loss of axle load and an ATB that's designed like this will basically perform like an open diff which okay. is obviously exactly yeah. what you want to sort of like prevent or mm -hmm. avoid whereas the wave track's got this patented device in the center that when there's sort of like a difference in axle speed which is basically like your loss of axle load this will ramp up and push out mm -hmm. but none of these parts wear inside the diff so it's not like a locking differential or anything like that so it's still nice and smooth yeah it just operates more of the time um better basically yeah more better yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice one <laughs> so so yeah and then you've got things inside the diff like the carbon fiber bias plates as well mm -hmm. 
the lift for you and try and pull that out of there. So this is basically what the pinions rotate on. Okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. And on other yeah. some other designs, um, the pinions will run directly on the housings. Mm -hmm. And over time, what happens is, is the pinions will polish the housings, reduces yeah. the amount of friction. It basically reduces how effective yeah. the diff is. And obviously if you're fitting something like this, it's quite a big expense. So you want yeah. to have it working at the same performance level hmm. sort of like for longer. So that's basically what the wave track does. Yeah. It's just sort of like a development on from, from everything Sweet. else really. It was your idea actually to do this because obviously you know my path with the car, you know my plans with it. And you said, mm -hmm. why don't you try a diff? And actually yeah. the rear diff is actually open for pre-orders now, I believe. So yeah, I'll be messaging you about that and as I, well. Obviously speaking to you about it as well, like I myself wasn't really convinced that this was going to make a big difference to mm. our car. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not mm. going to make a big difference. We put it in it and actually it's one yeah. of the biggest sort of like differences, especially if you're driving the car like on track, around roundabouts, yeah, you've got yeah. a lot of power, stuff like that. Mm. Every single time you upgrade the power, you start to notice how bad the stock diff is. Yeah, how it puts it down and everything. But yeah, wicked. So basically the plan is, obviously this isn't a five minute job. I'm gonna leave the car with you for uh, probably about a week, I reckon. Um, just, uh, yeah, to let you guys do the whole thing. And then I'll be back to then pick it up, take it straight on track, which I'm very much so looking forward to. Perfect. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to that. And thank you for explaining all of this. But um, but yeah, my one, um, that one, like you said, is a DSG one. My one's yep. coming later on today, you said. Um, so that isn't my exact one. Uh, but yeah, all this should be very exciting and I'm very looking forward to seeing what it's like. Absolutely. Okay, here we are back at Regal. It's been about a week since we dropped the car off. Of course, joined once again with Ash. Um, we did actually have to do a little bit more work to the car. Um, so, which yeah. you found whilst you had everything stripped out um, with the flywheel, especially. Yeah, it's just obviously we're working in that particular area. Mm -hmm. We've got the gearbox off. Um, obviously, we're always going to inspect the flywheel, the clutch, all that kind of stuff, just to make sure it's okay. But on this particular one, it looked like there's a lot of play in, in the flywheel. Yeah. So, you probably could have got away with it. But how many thousand miles? Who knows yeah, kind of exactly. thing. Exactly, so, whilst we're there anyway. Yeah, just, um, just bang one on. I think you just made the decision just to yeah. put one on. So just refresh that and then mm -hmm. that won't give you any issues. Obviously, yeah. if you're using it the way you're using it, you're going to go through firewalls a little bit yeah. faster than most other people. <laughs> so, um, and it's probably worth noting as well, when I did the stage three and I did the clutch, I didn't do the flywheel. Okay. Um, so I think what we did- How many thousand miles is this now? Uh, 85,000 ish. 85. So it's getting on a bit. Pretty good mileage. The, the poor old thing, poor old thing. But um, yeah, it's, uh, well, it is, it, the car's been here for about a week or so. Um, obviously you've had everything stripped out and it's quite a, a long process as well, isn't it? Yeah, um, so I mean, the, the process, it takes around sort of like eight hours in yeah. total, I'd probably say. Like if one person was just working on it from start to finish, yeah. which kind of never really happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Most yeah. of the time, especially when we send the diff away to have like the rivets um, drilled out, so we're at mm -hmm. the mercy of like the machine shop as well. Yeah. So obviously we get all that done and obviously doing the alignment on the car as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, because obviously we have some of the suspension apart. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's about eight hours. We've done tons yeah. of these now. So Absolutely, it's, it's quite, yeah. uh, quite a straightforward job to us mm. but it's one that's really good because the difference is massive when you absolutely you know i'm really looking forward to seeing obviously, what it's like you can't see it but yeah absolutely it yeah really it, lo it looks the same as what it was when <laughs> when i dropped it off mm. um but like i mentioned earlier on in the video uh, i do have a track day book tomorrow up in bedford never been there before so very much so looking forward to it have, have you done it before done bedford? yeah i've done yeah. Bedford a couple of times yeah I it's quite a big track i hear but it's some people like it i'm gonna okay. be honest i don't particularly like it Fair that enough. much i'm more <laughs> of sort of like uh a Brands Hatch kind of person. Yeah, like, you're always like there. Like you're that. you're so, always yeah. there. I, Brands Hatch is one I haven't done yet, mm -hmm. to be honest. But um, Wicked, I think that is all done then. Um, we, uh, yeah, diff all done. It, basically. Absolutely, yeah. And um, we'll be back here at Regal in the new year, definitely, for a load of other bits which we've been speaking about. Um, so definitely more to come up from all of us. But yes, um, I think I'm going to hop in, head up to Bedford, get this track day done and see what it's like. But um, Look forward to it. Awesome, yeah, no, mate, I cannot wait. But thanks again to both yourself here at Regal and also Wave Track. And uh, yeah, no let's worries. get on the road. The Wicked. One. 
Okay, good morning. Welcome to Bedford Autodrome. It's my first time here and of course will be the first outing with the new Wave Track Limited Slip Diff. Picked the car up yesterday, so today is literally uh, the first possible opportunity that I can try this out on track. Um, it's my first time here at Bedford, like I mentioned. Um, so I have been out for a couple of sessions before, just before this, um, just to get used to things. Um, it's a great track actually. I'm really looking forward to bringing you this last segment of the video. So we'll get out on track, have some fun, and see how this wave track performs. Now this is actually my first proper dry track day, <laughs> believe it or not. I think this is my fourth or fifth track day, but the first one which it hasn't been raining. The first thing you do notice is just the turning is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. That has been a wet track, a wet part of the track all morning. So it's still a little bit wet, but the back straight still we can hit. Forty, one fifty-ish. <laughs> Epic fun. this is turning out to be <laughs> honestly it is such a weapon brakes feeling good tires also feeling good i think this will be the last track day for them So much speed, so much speed. Flat through here, oh, not quite. <laughs> now, first impressions of the wave track is honestly, it's such a hard thing to portray how grip is given to a car, it, it's so hard, I mean try it, it's impossible. You just feel so connected to the car and to be honest this is the first proper outing with um, actually some proper heat in the tyres as well so I mean all the handling bits we've done so far is all compiled into one but even on my drive up last night just I don't know if you're having a bit of a blast or something especially from the low down gears you just have so much more grip you can carry so much more speed ultimately have so much more fun <laughs> now it is a freezing cold day today so grip isn't perfect I mean it's three degrees and it's half ten in the morning um, it was pretty much sub-zero um, on the first session this morning which was fun but it, what it all boils down to is confidence I mean this is my third session here I've never been here before and to be honest I think I'm carrying quite good pace it's just remarkable how you can go to a track blind and within maybe half an hour of track time you feel really confident with it. Now one observation which I've made actually is actually obviously how the car delivers its power. We've got the TT V5 turbo. It's a big turbo, it's not a hybrid. It can be a little bit laggy, kind of low down. I didn't see that this was going to be a problem when I bought the turbo because it's going to be a track car you're not going to be spending that much time below 3000 rpm but with the wave track it almost feels 
like the turbo spooling up a little bit quicker and that sounds so bizarre i know but it's the only way that i can kind of portray it because where you've got so much more low end grip it just feels like i don't know the car just feels quicker because of it and i especially noticed it this morning where grip was right down i know that this car was going to be spinning but it definitely wasn't spinning as much that's for sure but i suppose that connected with the cup twos you have so much more grip and therefore from standing starts or second gear uh, coming out of corners you can just get on the power so much earlier the power gets put down so much earlier and there you are going a lot faster one positive thing with today though is it's so cold that the car is actually running really cold as well normally on a track day even with like the all cooler and the uh, intercooler and things like that we'd be running at probably 115 maximum or 105 at the moment <laughs> which is not bad at all so if we can get this flat this time come on oh my god right up to 7000 130 140 45 I love this bit as well, at the end of the back straight. <laughs> brilliant track this, absolutely brilliant track. Anyway, now we've caught up to some traffic. I think we'll do a couple of cool down laps and then we'll pop out again for one more session, maybe once the track has dried out even more, maybe when eh, it's a touch warmer as well, but oh, <laughs> this car, this car, <laughs> so epic. Okay, another session. This is actually my fourth session today. Second that you guys are seeing. All tires are cold. <laughs> um, unfortunately though, this will be my last session of the day. I've booked a whole day, but it's not even lunchtime yet, and this is gonna have to be my last session because my pads are mm, getting a little bit low. I don't really, really, really wanna risk doing uh, a whole day uh, and then completely ruining them. The tires are also uh, on the worn side as well. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, we'll just do one more session. Uh, still have a little bit more fun um, before calling it a day. But yeah, I mean, this car, just every time I drive it now is normally when I've had a new modification on it. And it, it's mad how you can just see the stages of it improving. And I absolutely love it absolutely love it now a big thank you goes to regal autosport and also wave track for helping me with the diff <laughs> absolutely awesome addition to the car and in fact i've only done the front diff for now a rear diff will be coming because we're going to be doing a uh, suspension overhaul uh, in uh, not too long actually not too long at all are definitely going to be destroyed by the end of this <laughs> it's actually a really long lap as well oh, oh yeah i meant to be careful on the brakes aren't i oops definitely be coming back here again though it's an epic track That then like spins a little bit because the tires are still a little bit cold it's only five degrees outside but the grip from just doing the diff is crazy I'm trying to be careful on the brakes in fact these ceramic pads are brilliant genuinely very very good so I'll definitely be going for them again of course Forge Motorsport matching up with the Forge Motorsport big brake kit that we got on the car
crikey. <laughs> anyway, folks, doing a little cool down lap now. It's quite a long track, like I mentioned. Um, so plenty of time to cool the car down. Some of the cars go by. Um, and yeah, the diff has absolutely transformed this car. Absolutely transformed it. And over the winter, of course, there will be uh, a lot of bits going on. Uh, of course, will be documented on the channel. And then when the weather improves uh, towards the early part of next year, of course, we will be back out on track, hopefully outside of the UK as well. Uh, but yeah, that is gonna wrap things up for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.